Bangkok, is it the best city in the whole world? Well, it might just be, but it can be a little overwhelming to find all the best things to do down there in this crazy city of Bangkok. So I made this video for anyone out there who's planning a trip here anytime soon. I'm gonna show you 25 of the best things to do here. We're, there's gonna be Thai food, nightlife, temples, shopping, all, all the 25 best things to do in Bangkok in one video. It's a super long video, so just chill. Grab yourself a drink. You might wanna watch it over a couple of sessions. I have chapter markered everything. So each of the 25 spots has its own chapter marker. So think of this as your ultimate Bangkok travel guide. You can reference back to this video and piece together the perfect one or two or three day itinerary. And if you wanna find all the places on this list, and literally like 500 more of my favorite places all over Thailand. Then I got an app with everything in there. There's a QR code here. I'll leave a link in the description. It's got video tours, turn-by-turn -turn directions, all the details about all the best things to do all over Thailand. Now, why am I doing this video? And what special guests are going to be in this video? Well, rather than explain it now, let's just get this thing started. It's called the Bangkok List to rule them all. Oh, now, I wouldn't normally recommend getting up at 4.20 a.m. unless you got something good to do. And I got something good to do. Today's a big day. No time to shower today. What is this list, the big Bangkok list to rule them all? Well, about 10 years ago, the king himself, Mark Weens, made his iconic video, 25 Things to Do in Bangkok, and it's got almost 8 million views. It's become the de facto go-to list for people coming to Bangkok looking for things to do, but a lot has changed in the last 10 years. <laughs> I'm gonna visit each spot on Mark's list and I'm gonna tell you if it's still worth visiting today. And I'm gonna re-rank the list. I'm gonna give you the Bangkok list to rule them all. Man, this is it, yeah, we're at Chinatown and you don't often see it like this. Streets empty, this is usually lined with action. Street vendors, wall-to-wall -wall people. The city is usually hustling and bustling, so full of life and, and action, and it's awesome in the day, in the night, when most of us see it. But to get to experience it like this is so special. That's why number 25 on the list is watch Bangkok come to life in the morning. It's a neat experience, no doubt about that. It's just cool seeing locals set up shop and just reminds me like all these food stall workers and vendors that you see work their ass off. It's crazy how early they're up preparing everything for the day's work. Yeah, it's funny, like a lot of people's view of ties is they're so easy going yeah. that it can be misconstrued as lazy. Yeah. But man, they work hard. Really hard. You getting hungry? Yeah, quite. 
as much as I love this. It's a little too early in the morning for fried chicken. Okay, I'll pung cap. I usually go for something with eggs in it in the morning, but to say today I got cow camo. This is uh, one of my favorites, the stewed pork leg, pickled mustard greens, and why not? Probably about 7.30 in the morning, gonna throw a little of the tangy, sour, spicy sauce on it. Stomach's full, but I'm a little bit thirsty. So what do you cap? What do you cap? Ah, nunquat. Oh, fresh. And the beauty is that you can do this in any neighborhood in Bangkok. Just wake up early, go out, walk the streets, and you'll be amazed at how awesome it is and how different it is. In Thailand, every morning, some old traditions are still very much alive. You'll see monks out with their food pots in various street stalls and restaurants and businesses, offering them up food in the morning. And uh, this is how they eat for the day. I feel like I've lived an entire day. Yeah. It's 8, 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 in the morning, and, and I too have something very important I gotta do. I gotta go back to bed. And 8.39 in the morning, and I'm tired. This is just the beginning. And when we get to number one, big surprise, Mark Weens himself is gonna be joining me. Right, Mark? Mark, you out there? Hi, Mark Weens, please. Oh, Mark. Yeah, Chris Parker here. Chris Parker? No worries, man. You'd probably know me from my YouTube channel, fellow YouTubers. Uh, channel name's Retired Working For You. That's R E. Yeah, anyway, don't worry about it, man. I got some exciting news for you. I want to invite you to be in a video with me. I'm doing this amazing series. I think it'd do wonders to boost your popularity. And Mark? Mark? But enough of that, I'm working for you guys. So let's uh, make our way to number 24 on the list. The historical Pak Klong Talat, or Bangkok's central flower market, is number 24. Mark, at number 24, you had Pad Klong Talat, AKA the flower market. And I'm standing right in the middle of this place. So I probably would have left this off the list altogether. But there's been a new addition to this neighborhood in uh, just the last couple of years. And because of that place, this definitely deserves to stay on the list at number 24. So I'm gonna pull out the green Sharpie and leave it. Pad Klong Talat is number 24 on my new list. Talat means market. And if there's one thing Bangkok does better than anywhere in the world, it's run a cool market. And this place is absolutely huge. It's got tons of flora and fauna. You got some daffodils? Orchids by the bushel. Of course you got roses. What the hell are these ones? Does anybody know? I, I don't know. Anyway, this place is open 24 hours a day seven days a week and they actually say the best time to come here is like the middle of the night that's when it's at its most active like three or four a.m but you could combine number 24 on the list with number 25 from yesterday and make an amazing morning itinerary <laughs> And this just goes on and on and on. This 
market's located right next to the Chaupaya River. I got here by taking the MRT. That's the underground subway. You get off at, I think, Sanam Chai Station. Sanam Chai Station. There's also a boat pier nearby. And this place is actually really close to a few other things that are going to be revealed on the list as I continue to count it down. You could plan to spend a couple hours here easily. There's street food if you get hungry. But I promised you guys this bonus place that's in this neighborhood and it's brand new. And to enjoy it, I think I'm going to partake in one of my favorite activities in all of Thailand. Nice cool meal at a Thailand 7-Eleven. Does life get any better than this? Well, yes it does in just about five minutes. Oh, it's flooding here. The whole river's flooding down here. Oh no, I came up the wrong place. I want to be up there where they're sitting. So this is the Chao Praia Sky Bridge and, and this place just opened a couple of years ago in June of 2020. It's a pretty cool new feature in Bangkok. You got 360 degree views of the Chao Phraya River. It's an amazing place to come up for sunset and you're, you'll find all kinds of ties. They got like theater seating here and there's all kinds of th local ties who are coming up. It's a very family friendly activity. So feel free to bring the kids on today's activity. And being up here, it just makes me realize why I'm doing this list. So much has changed in Bangkok in the last 10 years. This place is brand new. Almost everywhere we're gonna go, ha it has something new about it. I can't wait to update you guys because I know there's so many of you who are getting ready to book your first trip back here in a long time. Number 23 on the list is Pahurat, also known as Bangkok's Little India. and it's an area surrounding Pahurat Road. It began as an enclave of Vietnamese immigrants who came to Siam in the late 1700s when King Taksin was ruling. And then in 1898, there was a big fire here. And after that, King Chula Longkorn decided to build a road and he named it Bahruda, which was the name of his daughter, Princess Bahruda Manimaya. So don't say that we don't teach you anything here on this channel. Many of today's residents in this vibrant neighborhood are of South Asian descent, including many Hindus and Muslims. And one of the landmarks here, just behind me, is, is a big Sikh temple. It's called the Guru Singh Sabha, and it's recognizable because of its massive golden dome on top. It's also a great landmark if you're feeling a bit peckish and want to grab a lovely little street snack. Just before we get to the Eaton, I should definitely walk you through here. This place is called the Indian Emporium. It's four floors of textiles, one of Bangkok's biggest textile shops. You can find all kinds of fabrics, light clothing for the Bangkok heat. Spend a half hour or so in here. The Indian Emporium, a Bangkok institution. And now I'm just coming out of the Indian Emporium. And when you come out, you want to turn right. And if you want a good street snack, this place has been here for years. Oh, there they are. A nice couple. They make samosas. She's got the fresh potato tasty mixture, putting them in the fresh pastry shells, pinching them together, and then he's frying them up. Is it possible I buy just one piece samosa? 20 baht. 20 baht. All right, thank you so much. It's okay, can I just take? Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna eat it now. I love your samosas. Well, they were awfully nice to do that. Oftentimes the street food comes in packs of 10 and packs of five and stuff. And if you ask for just one little bite, they're gonna say no. Mm. And their samosas are amazing. The reason I didn't order more is because I'm feeling hungry for a big lunch. We're just about to go eat that. But I thought I'd walk you down Sweets Alley 
where you find all kinds of dessert shops with those tasty but extra sweet Indian desserts. You can pop in here and enjoy one of those, most likely after a meal. And when you get to the end of Sweets Alley, you pop out in just another market. It's at the back of Indian Emporium and it just goes on and on and on and you could uh, browse around there, food everywhere. But I'm gonna go all the way back out past Sweets Alley, past the Samosa Lady, and down to my favorite lunch spot in this whole area. I just gotta cross this damn street because the place you gotta go for lunch and I'm about to eat, it's just over there. Honey marks, get set. Made it out alive on that one. Another reference point, Indian Emporium there. This place can be a little bit tricky to get around, so you're just going to want to dip down this little alley and head right straight to the canal. Man, boys in brown everywhere today. So you pop out the end and you got two choices. This place is good, as I was saying. Boys in brown everywhere. This place here is actually really good. Uh, we like eating there. Let me just give you a quick glimpse into the future. But now, let's go to the place that's been here even since Mark Weens used to come here. Give me a bite of this and I'm happy. This place is called Tony's and it's my favorite Indian food in Bangkok. If you're looking for good, reasonably priced Indian food, come talk to Tony. So this place, is it's in a super cool old building and the kitchen's just right there, just an open air kitchen. Nice, man. Look at this. It's got that paneer cheese in it. Just simple. Put it together and enjoy. By the way, this is Indian Nepalese. Great vegetarian menu. Incredible if you're a vegetarian. How much? 135? So 135 baht, so that's about $3.50 for a delicious lunch. Even got a chai masala tea to close it off. And you'll notice a trend that I'm <clears throat> going to a lot of cheap spots on this list, but don't worry, for those of you that like to waste money, stay tuned. There's a couple of places that are overpriced on the list. This is the Ong Ang Canal, and what I'm walking on now doesn't look too special but it has all been renovated. It just opened up into a walking street, kind of walking street night market on the weekends. And uh, this is what it looks like empty, but this is what it looks like full. starting with dessert tonight. If there is something we need, it's a leap of faith. A step away from the comfort zone and be a little brave. So take a look around you. How far can you see? How far do you think? Good morning, everyone. Chris here, retired working for you. And uh, we're down to number 22 on the Bangkok list to rule them all. And I got a very special guest. She's walking right in front of me. When I get to number one, I'm gonna meet Mark Weens. He's gonna come on a video with me. Oh yeah, right, yeah. Mark Weens, yeah. No, he is. Tony, keep dreaming. So number 22 
on the Bangkok list to rule them all. Well, let's see what Mark Weens had. Oh, he had Thai cooking class. We're not going to any old cooking class. We're cooking with poo. <laughs> By the way, that's poo there. This is all oh, papaya. Today we have seen papaya. She takes you through, she explains everything that you see. What is this one? Pancake. How is it? It's nice. Mmm. <laughs> Cute boy. basically meat as far as the eye can see. We're just getting to the end of the market. Gonna jump back in the van and we're gonna go turn those ingredients into something tasty. We hope. It's right in the back alleys of Kong Doi, which is biggest slum. That's what it's known as. I like to call it Bangkok's biggest challenged community, but it's just a massive, massive community back here. Here we are entering, cooking with poo to prepare the ingredients. cool things about cooking with poo is after you cook up there's too much food for everyone to eat all of it they bring it out here share it with the local neighbors in the neighborhood and put some smiles on some faces Ooh, big doggy she teaches you a lot about some of the rules of Thai cooking. You'll go home with the full recipes for three different dishes, but you'll also hear some secret tips and tricks from uh, like the old school, the previous generation. It's a really cool experience. Oh my God. I did good. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. It looks so, it looks so legit. Oh yeah. Mmm. Nice and done, Haley. Back in the kitchen for the third and final dish. Another dish prepared by Chef Haley. We're gonna add some of the red chilies to it though. I hope it doesn't blow in my face. Whoa, that's a lot of chili. All right, let's see how Haley's pad thai tastes. There's the chef. It just tastes different. It tastes different than most pad thais that I've had and I actually really, really like it. And when you're done with the main course, she cuts up a wide variety of Thai fruit that is absolutely a must try. So while everyone's enjoying the fruit for dessert, let's catch up with Pooh herself. Pooh, this has been amazing. Yeah, thank wow. you. Wow, and this is your house? Yeah, my house too. And then you were saying that uh, when people come and support and buy your cookbooks and come to your cooking class, that it that it helps the community a little bit as well. Yeah, if you want to come to my class and buy cookbook or apron, 
the money for your helping and support, helping a lot the business in our area. And every December, we have money for the kids go to school too. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. So number 22 on the Bangkok list to rule them all is cooking with poo. This is amazing. Thank it's you. something you have to do when you're in Bangkok. Bangkok is consistently rated one of the world's top cities for food of all kinds, and it's pretty easy to see why. That's why I'm super excited. The number 21 on the Bangkok list to rule them all is Thai street food. And you know, there's tons of amazing restaurants out there of all kinds, but I think Mark said it best when he made the original video 10 years ago. Fancy sit-down restaurants are great, but in my opinion, it's the street side stalls and the family run hole in the walls that serve the best Thai cuisine. So Thai street food, where to begin? Man, when I was thinking about how to illustrate Thai street food in this video, it was a bit overwhelming, I'll be honest. There's like just way too many options. So I decided to come here to Bang Jack Station, a nice local neighborhood with a nice local street food street. What street are we on here? Uh, with, uh, 95. Oh, let's take a quick look around the corner here. And are you gonna take me up this street, Jib? Yes. So here's the deal. Jib's gonna walk me up her local street. We yes. got Dana here, my old buddy. Oh yeah. It's a Isan sausage. Isan sausage. I think we need to go with that. Sausage. I think you need to do both. Uh, Dana, vegetarians aren't allowed to pick my meat of choice. That's that's not how this works. When you're my right? size, you can. So this is a nice Isan sausage. Yeah. Jib, Jib's gonna just feed me. This is gonna be dinner for me, Jib. So it, what's inside this? A little bit of Pork rice. and rice and uh, garlic, I guess. And there's herb and spice. Sour? Yes. And, and pretty damn tasty. Because it's fermented. Did it come with the cabbage or anything yeah. else? Yeah. Oh, with cabbage? Yeah. Okay. What about little chilies? Did they uh, give any little chilies? Yeah, so you want chili, really? Oh. Jib, I'm here to experiment. <laughs> With, I'm here to Careful. experiment, Jim. Careful. Okay, let's see. Is that a little cabbage? Oh. You want more cabbage? I only took half the chili. Yeah. Very spicy, Jim. I told you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give the East End sausage a nine out of 10. What is this, sticky rice? Uh, rice, sticky rice, so they sell like a uh, rice, so you have to cook at home. This is my favorite fried chicken in the, in the city. This one's some easy eating. What do you order in here? Uh, it's a chicken skin, it's deep fried, so uh, crunchy, like you have potato chip, right? We have chicken skin. Okay, let's try. Okay, so potato chips, eh? <laughs> chicken skin. Cheers, Chip. Whoa. Mmm, that's pretty good. All right, we're gonna be trying lots of new stuff with Jeb. So Jeb, one thing I've always wondered, in, yeah. in typical Thai culture in Bangkok, yes. for, for normal families and stuff, mm -hmm. how often do you guys eat street food? Every day. <laughs> Every day? Yes. Yeah. Because the cost here, you see, like you can get a box of food like 20 baht, 25 baht. Your favorite street food in all of Bangkok, if you oh. had to pick one. Oh my god, that's a tough question. I would say Khao Kha Mu. We ate Khao Kha Mu in number 25, I think it was, on this oh, list. Okay. Yeah. So if you haven't tried Khao Kha Mu, it's Jib's favorite, give that one a try. So Jib is about to invent a new version of Thai street food, bubble tea, right at this cart behind me here. It's hot and spicy. Oh. The syrup. Sugar. And ginger soup. Ginger hot soup. ginger soup. And a... The, bit, the fresh uh, yeah. tofu and curd. And you use this door? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. It's boiling hot. It's a Thai bubble tea. I think I gotta let it cool down, right Jib? Yes, if it I'm scared, I'm scared. Don't do it, don't do it. Mm. It's definitely too hot. <laughs> 15 baht. Womichelli salad. 
some lemon juice, some chilies, some fish sauce. Yes. And then this is the glass Michelle. noodle. Mm -hmm. She's famous. You call glass noodle or vermicelli? I don't know. How much for that? 50? Uh, 50 bucks. Can be dinner. My question for you as a, as a vegetarian mm. is what do you do for, uh, in, in the streets of Bangkok as far as the food goes? You know, I, I love like a lot of the fruit. Samtam's one of my favorite things. You know, all of those types of foods are just out of this world for me. And there's a lot of options. Pad pak, which is stir fried vegetables, vegetable fried rice. You know, if you eat eggs, omelets, boiled eggs everywhere, and then samtam, samtam, samtam. I love samtam. All right, I think I see Jib ordering something else. Oh, let's go. Like a kid on Christmas morning. Oh, yeah. That's so sexy. Oi, oi, hot, mate. He's, he's... <laughs> it tastes good when you eat it hot, but not this hot, I think. She's burning herself. <laughs> uh, this is number 21 on my list. Any guesses what's next, number 20? Salad too. That, what's that? You don't know it? You have to try it. So number 20 on the Bangkok list to rule them all, yes, it is the king of all Thai fruit. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I'm curious where you stand. Drop a comment below. Let me know. Do you think it's tasty, delicious, or it smells like these trash cans smell? Oh, God. I'm glad you can't smell that. Durian, 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 durian. I personally love it, but it's not durian season right now. So I'm on my way to a new restaurant in Bangkok where the chef has created all kinds of dishes around durian. But first, let me take you back to the past where I got to enjoy some of the fresh stuff. Oh, spiky. Can I get this one? 100 baht. Oh man, this one is sharp and pokey. Okay, this is the king of Thai fruit. Look at the way it just comes right out of that because they've cut it so nicely. I'm gonna give this a real big bite. Mmm. Don't you just love eating it when it's fresh, just seconds out of its prickly little shell with its mustardy goodness just dripping like a Homer Simpson there. But the best time to eat it is June to September. That's the heart of durian season. It's November now, and although I could find it, I'm not gonna. We're gonna take you to the durian restaurant. And while I'm on my way there to meet my special guest, let me tell you all you need to know about durian. Known as the king of Thai fruit, durian are like little prickly cannonballs and usually weigh between two and seven pounds. But as unique as they look, it's the smell that gets most people talking. It's the pungent odor that offends so many people. And it's the reason why it's banned from public transportation and movie theaters and why some taxis will refuse a ride if they see you with this stinky fruit. Despite its rank smell, durian is a super fruit and naturally rich in iron, vitamin C and potassium, and it's been known to lower blood pressure. The taste and texture vary greatly depending on the age when harvested. If you picked from the tree too early, it's almost considered a vegetable because the flesh is hard and bitter. But you should be looking for the ripened fruit that has a consistency, almost like custard as it melts away with each bite. Careful though, because they say if you drink alcohol while eating durian, it's very dangerous and can actually kill you. Ugh. While we're waiting for our food to get cooked, they have these little durian pillows, but I don't, I'm not quite sure about. <laughs> I, 
I'm not sure about these things. Durian sauce on yes, top of on a croissant. Top. Oh, this is fresh durian. Okay. On top. Do you wear the gloves because it's stinky? <laughs> the durian croissant. Mmm. It, it almost tastes like custard. You know, and it has yeah. a deep, yeah. And it's very sweet and very nice. All right, Morella, you start us off. Round two, she's going in for the durian pizza. I've never seen this before. Oh my God. It has really interesting taste. This reminds me a lot like a Hawaiian pizza. Drop a comment below. Hawaiian mm -hmm. pizza, yes or no? It tastes like durian and it has the texture of the smoothie. Tasty, this is fun. What do they got next? So this is like a durian toast stick. It looks like uh, toasted bread, almost like a French toast. Durian chips, chunks of durian. I'm starting to notice a bit of a theme in here. Whoa. Oh. Now we got uh, durian bingsu. Bingsu is the Korean shaved ice dessert that I think's taken the world by storm a little bit. So get your little mini bingsu spoon because they're so good for slicing into it. It's hard to get sometimes. It's like a mountain that you could topple over. Tasty business. And then I do encourage you at one point in your life to grab a chunky piece of durian and just ram it into your face. I'm standing in front of number 19 on the top 25 things to do in Bangkok list. Before telling you why this monument was erected in 1941, this is the perfect opportunity to give you a little bit of background on how Thailand managed to be one of the only countries in the world to never get colonized. <laughs> Okay, so back in the 1800s, European colonization was in full swing around the entire world. They were taking everything they could. I'm not super proud of my ancestors for doing it, but that's what they were doing. And Southeast Asia was no exception. The British took Myanmar and Malaysia. The French took what was known at the time as Indochina, which is Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos today. The Netherlands had taken Indonesia. So who took Thailand? Nobody. That's a little inside joke for my Toronto compatriots. Anywho, the Thailand kings at that time, first King Mongkut or Rama IV, and then King Chulalongkorn or Rama V, were both very savvy. They saw what was coming and decided to start signing trade deals and, and cooperate with European powers. This succeeded in integrating Thailand into the global marketplace. And then in 1896, the British and French agreed to leave Siam alone as a little bit of a buffer between their colonies. Now, it wasn't without its losses. In various conflicts at the time, the Kingdom of Siam grew smaller, losing parts of Cambodia, Laos, and Malaysia, leaving Thailand looking a lot like this. And this brings us right back here to number 19 on the Bangkok list to rule them all. This is Victory Monument. It was erected back in June of 1941 to celebrate a victory in the Thai Indochina War. But the best thing for you when you come here is that you're gonna find the cheapest bowl of noodles you've ever seen. That's the BTS station over there called Victory Monument. Right down here, you see a little bus station and this is where a lot of locals are hopping on, hopping off buses. You can get to a lot of places from there. Then you right over here, cross this footbridge, just start following the street food. So I've walked about 100 meters down the street, and so I want my coke. You're gonna wanna turn right here and head that way. Go all the way down to the end here, and then hang a left. You'll know you're getting close when there's a klong or canal on your right side. You'll see this temple on your left side, and then just across from that, 
is this place right here. Don't skip a meal at Boat Noodle Alley, a collection of canal side restaurants next to Victory Monument that serve bowls of pure porky delight. You can get the typical boat noodles, or you can get what I've got, which is Tom Yam noodles with a couple of uh, little pork balls inside, some senlek, some chilies, and look at this, it even has pork, pieces of pork inside. Mmm. If you come during the lunch rush, this place will be absolutely packed uh, and hard to get a table, quite honestly. So I came a little bit after the lunch rush. A little peanutty. Definitely got <clears throat> Tom Yum flavor. Number 19, get yourself down to Victory Monument. And uh, if you want to find this place, others in the area, and hundreds more of my favorite local spots all over Thailand, uh, I should tell you that we got an app. We built an app called Teeny. You can find it on the Apple or Android store. Got turn-by-turn -turn directions. Every single place has a video tour done by me. And it's just meant to uh, get you guys out peeling back the layers of the onion that is this wonderful country called Thailand. I gotta get some rest. Number 18, coming up. All right, ready? Yeah. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Number 18 on the list is R-rated. So hide the children and kids if you're watching, you gotta stop right now. <laughs> Before I tell you where we're going, I should show you how we negotiated this tuk-tuk. And I got this. Let's uh, negotiate a tuk-tuk here. Kong Noi Ban. Yeah? Oh, that was easy. All right. Just a couple of big rocks. Oh my God, I just ruined my night. Unfortunately, Tuk Tuk hit a bump and we spilled the beer all over my crotch. We're at the mouth of number 18 on the list. Mark Weens had Silom and Pat Pong on the list at his number 18, and that's exactly where it's staying, but we're gonna skip the daytime activities of Silom, and we're going right into the nighttime activities right here in Pat Pong. And yes, there will be ping pong balls. Let's see what you got, man. Go, go, go. It never fails to amaze me how for so many of you out there, Bangkok's red light district seem to define this city. And this city has so much more to offer. Now that said, it still definitely warrants being on the list. And, but before we get to immersing you, I thought it'd be good to give you a fun little history lesson. Patpong is like the history couple like over 100 years. And that time Bangkok have only, you know, when we travel, we used the tram, we used the boat, you know, or walk. Apple just told me that Tony Poe is famous because of what? He, when he killed enemy, he cut the ear. And there's Tony's ears that he's cut off. So Apple's just told us that this gentleman is responsible not only for Air America, but for the birth of Thailand's very first go-go dancer. Yes, yes. Imagine being the guy who invented the go-go bar. That guy's gonna go down in history. But we're not gonna take you inside a go-go bar. Sing ha? Yep. And what kind of beer do you want? Uh, Heineken. Heineken. One singer, one Heineken. Heineken. Okay, let's go by. I will go. But it needs to be cold. But we have ice, done already. So what are you doing? You put ice inside? Yeah, sure. Because the beer was not cold enough. Yeah. But they have ice. Yeah, we have ice, so don't worry about cold enough. Well, why worry about anything? Thank you, Cap.
What did you have? Do you have cold beer? Cold beer? Where? Here? Cold beer. Oh, yes. I'm just about ready to talk ping pong. Let's see if we can kind of get a walk through the sales process. What is on your list, sir? Ping pong? Ping pong to put, 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 see, put ping pong. Put, put see, smoke, smoke cigarette. Smoke cigarette? Yeah, put see, open button. Put see, collection. And they write a letter. Uh, how do they write a letter? Put see, write a letter. How, how's this possible? Yeah, put, put see, raw, raw, raw picture. Fishes? Yeah. Ooh, carrots, needles, program. crackers. Yeah, yeah. What type of menu yeah. are you purveying tonight, uh, sir? So I'm not one for the ping pong shows par se, but before I end this video, I should take you inside one of the Go Go Bars picture, if you will. It's your birthday, you're in Bangkok, and you come out to Pat Pong to celebrate with a bunch of friends, and you decide to go in there. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Oh, hello out there, world. My name is Chris and I'm retired, extremely hungover for you. But my mom, she told me to always follow through on my promises and I promised you guys I'd go to the top 25 things to do in Bangkok one every single day. I mean, my mom never had a hangover like this. Anyway, I hope number 17, something easy. Maybe a walk in the park, simple temple visitor. Oh, man. not again. Number 17 on the list is a place that many of you won't ever see in the daytime, let's be honest. This is Khao San Road, and for many of you, it defines your time in Bangkok, and it deserves to stay right where it is on the list at number 17, right where Mark Weens had it 10 years ago. And speaking of Mark Weens, he's actually gonna be joining me when we get down to number one on this list. He's going to join me for the video. Now, he hasn't quite confirmed it just yet, but I, I do have good news. I was able to jump on a FaceTime call with him just earlier today. Oh, hey, Mark. Uh, good to finally get a hold of you, man. Where are you at these days? I am in Bangkok, Thailand. Cool. Well, what are you up to today? So I'm just cool. refreshing myself with the Yadom. Ah, cool. I'd love to offer you the opportunity to join me when I get down to number one on the on the list of things to do in Bangkok. Oh. I know, it's pretty exciting. I'll even let you pick number one on the list. Oh man, that is ridiculous. You got any ideas for number one? I could snack on mackerel faces all day long. Mackerel faces? But I gotta get back to number 17 on the list. So as you can see, things are starting to look pretty solid. In fact, I'm gonna say that you can bank on Mark being here for number one. But for now, back to Khao San Road. The word Khao San actually translates into milled rice because in the past, this used to be a major Bangkok rice market. About 40 years ago though, the dirty hippie backpackers discovered it and the rest is history. As this place turned into one of the most famous backpacker ghettos in the whole world. Just a couple of years ago though, they completely renovated the street and did an awesome job. Some come to Khao San for the cheap accommodations you can find. Some come for street markets you'll find around this area in the daytime selling handicrafts paintings and elephant pants but let's be honest you're not coming to Khao San Road in the daytime you're coming to Khao San Road at night hey cameraman come join me my nephew, Cheers. my nephew Adam and I are going for a walk down one of the craziest streets in the world yeah, this street is uh, about two, three hundred meters of insanity. By the time we get to the other end, you tell me. Do you know a crazier street in the world than Khao San Road? Let's go.
take a tuk tuk home. When you get out to the end, either end, it's flocked with tuk tuks available. So negotiate the best, best price you can. And I wanted to close by saying something about Khao San Road. It defines Bangkok for so many people out there that I know. They think Bangkok and they think Khao San Road, but there's so many amazing places here in Bangkok on this list that I encourage you to uh, explore outside Khao San Road. Now, this deserves to be right where it is on the list, number 17, but check out all the other ones in this list and make sure you do some of it. So, number 16 on the Bangkok list to rule them all. Oh, this is a good one. You're a fan of the channel? Ah, uh, yes, meeting officer, decorated officers out here just as we're leaving the bridge. Nice to meet you. You want a photo? All right, nice to meet you. Amazing, off to number 16. Thai policeman who was a subscriber. That was a pleasant surprise. Shout out to all the Thai policemen. If you ever catch me doing something nefarious, go easy on me, would you? Anyway, number 16 on the list is get a sundowner in the sky and visit one of many Thailand's rooftop bars. Now, it might not be up super high yet, but uh, that's where we're going next. First though, let me get a drink and I'll tell you a little bit about this place. What do you got? Tulio. Ah, two ice cold Leos. So, while I get ready to dig into these, let me tell you about these low level rooftops. Yeah, the views might not be quite as spectacular as where we're going next, but the beers are a lot cheaper. This was 193 baht for the two beers. Don't know where the three baht comes from, but any mathematician out there, what's that? 90. 96 and a half. Now I'm gonna take you to the most famous rooftop bar in all of Bangkok. Yeah, you know the one, you've seen the movie, and uh, I'll just show you, it's just, it literally here, you pan up, look, there it is. We're going up there. You need long pants for Sky Bar? Well, apparently we need long pants to go into the fancy place that we're going. That's not what I was led to believe when they made that movie about it. Anyways. Luckily, I anticipated this. What's going on? You're gonna dress this handsome man? The cameraman has rented some pants. Oh, looking pretty sharp. How much were those? Uh, 150 to rent. I came prepared. It's gonna be the first time that I've put on a pair of pants in almost two years. I had a feeling there was going to be a dress code at this place. Excuse me for a minute. I'm not going to say that it's the most private place that I've ever changed my clothes around here. I'm getting in trouble from the lady. There's girls walking by the street. All this to get up on a rooftop bar? Why can't I wear shorts? I'm too hot. Okay, we're ready to go. Make a life for myself. Sky Bar, one of Bangkok's most famous places, perched up over the Chao Phraya River. Man, check this place out. So number 16, have a sundowner in the sky in Bangkok. Sunset's not that great tonight, but what a crazy, sweeping, epic view of Bangkok. Oh, the drinks have already arrived. And I should say that these, uh, the Heineken, 530 baht up here. This is for the rich folks. This is for the tourists who want to do it once. 
but just go up. There's a lot of rooftop bars that you can enjoy in Bangkok. As a matter of fact, just to offer you a little extra value, I'm going to give you seven rooftop bars in Bangkok that you can check out. Here you go. Number one sits on the 59th floor above Central World and it's called the Crew Champagne Bar. On the 32nd floor of the Skyview Hotel is the Mojo Rooftop Bar and Lounge. And if you want to get seen, then go to Scene Restaurant and Bar. On top of the Park Hyatt, you'll find the Penthouse Bar and Grill. Number five is one of my personal favorites. The A Bar is a gin bar floating in the sky above Prom Pong. Sip on Asian tipples at the Yao Rooftop Bar. And then last, but certainly not least, the one you all know, the Sky Bar. So th there you go, seven rooftop bars for you. A YouTube scrub like me in his backpack and his makeshift pants probably shouldn't be allowed in this place. And I'd suggest to you that nine, 99 times out of 100, you're probably gonna want to uh, stick down to the lower rooftop bars, save yourself just a little bit of money. really don't belong here but we're gonna take you up to the pinnacle the actual sky bar this is where all the madness Ow. went down YouTuber. oh yes yes, uh, yes. I, Chris, right? you know my name yes. oh nice to meet you nice oh. to meet you oh yes you having a good night yeah all right I like to look in really yeah oh nice what's your name yeah. all right Great. tell him I say hello okay okay <laughs> And now is the perfect time to tell you guys about Teeny. I got an app where I put hundreds of my favorite spots all over Thailand, and most of them are way cheaper than this. I'll tell you that, all with turn-by-turn -turn directions. Anyways, you can find it on your Apple or Android store. Search Teeny. I just wanted to thank all the people who've been writing and saying how you've been using it. It's made your Thailand experience so much better. So much love to you, because that thing's 100% community supported. Now. Number 15, I'm going to a place that I've never been to. A lot of you have told me to go there, but I've never been. Jeez, man, would you just take it easy for a couple of days? I can't take this much longer. Sorry about that, liver. Anyways, I have in my hands the Bangkok list to rule them all. Let's see what we got at number 15. What? A three-headed elephant? Don't you feel foolish. The place we're heading is a bit of a hike. It's about 21 kilometers that way, southeast of Bangkok in the Samut Prakan district. You can get there by taking a bus, number 511, and that runs through Khao San Road, runs all along Sukhumvit. You could catch it down near Asok. You could also take a taxi. That'd cost you about 300 baht. But Bangkok has an amazing transit system. And even though it's that far away, you can just jump on the BTS Sky Train and it'll get you there. Now, if you do take the BTS, the place we're going is actually between two stations. The first one is Hu Chao. And if you want to take a taxi from here, because there is still some work to do, then that's the one to get out at. Otherwise, you'll get involved in the dreaded Bangkok U-turn. <coughs> but I'm not taking a taxi, so I got out at this stop here, Chang Erawan. Okay, so I've arrived at the Erewhon Museum. Mark Weens had this at number 15 on his list 10 years ago. Let's go inside and see where it belongs on today's list. It costs 450 baht for tourists to go in there. But if you have a Thai driver's license or a work permit, which I happen to have, then you could get in for the same price as the Thai locals, which is 250 baht. Thank God that they didn't have a Thai language test to get the local rates because I would have failed that one miserably. Oh, this flower is beautiful. Lotus. Very nice. Take your shoes off before you go inside.
So just before going inside, let me tell you what this place is. It started as a vision of Thai millionaire Lech Varinapan, but he died before it was finished. So he passed the blueprints along to his son who ended up completing the project. Construction started back in 1994, but it didn't open to the public until 2003. So it is relatively new. You've probably seen this giant three-headed elephant in photos, but coming here, you realize how big it is. It's 29 meters tall and sits on top of a 15 meter tall pedestal, and it weighs an astounding 250 tons. The inside of the museum is a Hindu representation of the universe with each of the three floors inside telling a different part of the story. up in here but don't miss this little secret wooden door down here this is the ground floor meant to represent the underworld it's got some ceramics from the Ming and Qing dynasty and some old maps and artifacts from Siam and its history but I'm not allowed to take photos in there so you're gonna have to come yourself leave the underworld and go into the next section, the human world, which is inside this pink atrium. If you spend some time looking all around this room, you're gonna notice the incredible amount of detail, such as angel-like figurines carved into the handrails or the intricate glasswork. And then the epic part is walking up the stairs. So there is an elevator to take you up to the third and final floor that's meant to represent the heavens. We're inside one of the legs of one of the giant elephants right now in this endless spiral staircase. Man, Stanley Kubrick. So I got up to the very top, which is the belly of the elephant. You go inside, it's a big dome, and it depicts the solar system inside the, what would be the top of one of the elephant bellies. There's also some gardens just down out back behind the main museum. And if you want to spend some extra time here, you can kind of wander through these gardens. They also have some food and drink options here. Apparently the food's pretty good, I've heard, but I'm not gonna get any myself. Man, I've been carrying this thing everywhere with me. It's starting to get a little ratty. We're gonna keep number 15 at the Erewhon Museum. Hello. Roger Gap, these guys were watching me film. What's your name? What's your name? Thai. My name is Thai. We're doing best in Bangkok, man. Best in Bangkok. You made the list, Thai. Marihuana. Make sure that when you're going to place to place on the top 25 list and you're in Bangkok, don't be afraid of the little hole in the wall. I got some Penang Gai, Penang Curry. I got some Pad Kur Pao Mu, one of my favorites, and another classic stir-fried morning glory. I'm gonna finish up here and then take you to number 14. So to get where we're going, you could definitely take the MRT, but not the one I'd recommend. You could always hop on one of these river taxis, canal taxis. These things are an awesome way to get around Bangkok. They run up and down the canals. They totally beat all the traffic and the traffic is back, believe me. Oh, this is my stop. So these things are an amazing way to get around. Be careful hopping on and hopping off. You're gonna need to save up your energy because I've just arrived at number 14 on the Bangkok list to rule them all, Wat Saket. 
Wat Saket, otherwise known as the Temple of the Golden Mount. It sits on top of the only hill in Bangkok. That hill's 77 meters tall, and on top sits a 5.8 meter tall golden chetty that you can see literally from everywhere in Bangkok. It's a huge landmark here, and that used to be one of the tallest things in the whole city. When Mark did his video series 10 years ago, guaranteed, it would have stood out a lot more, but now it's a sea of skyscrapers. The skyline here seems to change every single month, and apparently there's 320 stairs to get to the top. So let's finish up our iced cappuccino and then tackle that beast. So 50 baht to get in, that's the admission price. And uh, this is a good time to talk about dual pricing because for Thai people, it's free to get in here. Um, and that's what they call dual pricing here. It's a hot button topic. There's a lot of people who that really makes them angry. It's like, why don't I get in free? The Thais get in free. I have to pay 50 baht, a whole dollar 60. I've never understood that anger over dual price. And if you want equality, maybe you should try living on a salary that the, that the average Thai has to live on, and then we'll let you in the temples for free. I am just procrastinating because the truth of the matter is the stairs await. <laughs> Walking up these stairs, let me tell you a little story about the vultures of Wat Saket. So way back in 1820, during the reign of King Rama II, there was a vicious cholera outbreak that spread from Penang all the way up through Thailand. So more than 30,000 people died just in the city of Bangkok, and they were all being sent here to these grounds to receive the bodies. And they were being sent here to be cremated. And due to the sheer number of dead bodies, the uh, temple couldn't keep up with the cremations. So tragically, they had to start collecting bodies here at the monastery. And that's when the vultures came. Things got so bad that this became the main feeding ground for what would become known as the vultures of Wat Saket. You might think you're at the top when you get up here because of the gorgeous, gorgeous views you already get. You'll come to this temple here and although some people are taking your shoes off, here's a little tip for you. You don't have to. So it's really beautiful in here. This is the first building, but there's still some more stairs to climb. You definitely don't want to end here in this building. You want to keep going up. This last little tiny thin stairway is the last until you're at the very top. Look at this. Wow. And this is why you come here. Man, I didn't realize how flat Bangkok is. This is definitely one of the tallest things in the city. No hills at all. This one was man-made to put the temple on. It collapsed uh, sh shortly after it was man-made and then it sat there, but then they've reinforced it with concrete. And you can see locals coming here to make offerings. It's a very popular place for both tourists and actual local Buddhists who want to come here and uh, ring bells. You can see they, they leave the little names on these heart things here. Back in the old days, people used to put these things with a name of a loved one often who was sick and they were asking for blessings to help, uh, help, help them recover quicker. And today in modern day, people come and leave them just as almost like a sign that they've been to the temple. That's what those little hearts on the little bells are. But they also got a really, really big bell. Do you know where I find the big bell? The way up.
Okay, so it's more of a gong than a bell, but the locals do ring these giant gongs and all the little bells you see for luck. It looks like uh, Bangkok's rolled out the gold tuk-tuk for the Bangkok list to rule them all. So today, number 13 on the new Bangkok list to rule them all is Siam Square. This is one of my favorite neighborhoods to walk around. Oh, you're also going to get a look at how ridiculous it is watching me shoot videos here in Bangkok. You're gonna get a little behind the scenes. This is Siam Paragon, giant Bangkok mega mall. This has got crazy high-end shops. Like, like one thing about Bangkok shopping malls that might surprise you is how crazy high-end the shops can be. You could easily kill a couple hours in there, but be wary, your pocketbooks are gonna take a hit. Right across from the Siam Paragon Mall is the Siam Center. Now that we're out of the noise, I can tell you a little bit about that. A much funkier, independent fashion type of zone. But what you're gonna wanna do now is cross through the BTS. So on one side of the tracks are the two glitzy malls, and on the other side of the tracks is a little, a little taste of something different in Bangkok. This is Siam Station. So you're gonna be here at Siam Station, and there's a massive station, two BTS lines wander out. Oh, got some schoolgirls having a little schoolgirl trouble, perhaps. I hope that everything's okay. Got a Starbucks here. And this is Siam Square One. This is like a concrete, really urban sort of mall. And then ultimately this shoots you back out into the reason that this made it on the list. What I'm walking into is what I like to call the Korea of Bangkok. Feels a lot like Seoul out here. Right off the bat, K-pop. And this street is different than a lot of streets in Bangkok. This is more what Seoul streets are like. You can see it's, it's, it's closed off to traffic. It creates just a really cool vibe. You see people flexing their fashion, their fashion muscles. You see all kinds of Korean restaurants. This is definitely a big selfie zone. There's, it's an independent music zone. There's a bunch of side soys. Um, so I am like soy two, soy four. There's all kinds of these rows of side soys, art galleries. Of course, weed shops now in every corner of Thailand. And uh, you just kind of beetle around the neighborhood. I love it here. It's always such so vibrant, such action. This is where the Thai young people show what, they're, show what they got. This street, wall to wall, Bangkok is not famous for its sidewalks and its its ease of use in uh, walking. It's one of the reasons I do love coming here, one of the reasons why you guys should definitely come here. And then this, this is the the pinnacle right here. This is this really is Siam Square. The history of this place, it, it used to be one of Bangkok's biggest slums, actually. And then, uh, I can't remember when, but decades ago, massive fire burned down, and Chula Longkorn uh, took it over and uh, completely rebuilt it. And man, like, they, they did a good job. You don't see this every day in Bangkok. It has a bit of a, it has a bit of a, New York feel to it. The architecture's super cool. Oh, check this out. 
Hello. 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 What's this? Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, today we're gonna go to a couple of watts, but not here. I'm right in the center of the hustle, the bustle of Sukhumvit Road, and uh, we're going down to the riverside. Let me get there and I'll tell you what we're doing today. So how to get here? Well, I took a taxi. Anyways, that's getting here, but we got bigger fish to fry. Okay, so Mark Weens had Wataroon at number 13 and Watt Foe at number 12, but Mark, you got too many watts on this list. So we're combining both of these into a brand new one. Number 12, what's this? Let's go inside to one of Bangkok's largest temple complexes and a place that's been on everybody's must visit list since before the very first time I even came here back in 1994. So 200 baht entrance fee, not bad. But was that about five, six bucks? Same as the cab ride over here. All right, let me get you acquainted with this place. So as soon as you come in, you're at the centerpiece of this place and you're gonna have to take your shoes off and wear pants below the knee. Your shoes in this little green bag and inside here is the centerpiece of the whole grounds here. This is why everyone comes here. This is the reclining Buddha. It's absolutely massive. It's 15 meters tall, it's 48 meters long, and it sits somehow almost impossibly inside a gorgeous temple with all kinds of intricate art artwork everywhere. I'm standing beside the feet here, and if you're wondering what size shoes this fella takes, the shoes themselves, the feet themselves are five meters long. Once you've seen what everybody comes for, the reclining Buddha, there's a lot more to this place, Wafo. You can uh, wander around the grounds here. You can get a guided tour. That would set you back about 400 Thai baht, and not a bad thing to do if you're a history buff, but the grounds are easy enough to just kind of walk around yourself. There's a lot of various temples and spires and ceramics and, and nice little bonsai trees. Another cool thing about Wat Po is that this is considered by many to be the birthplace of Thai massage. So every time you're in there getting a rub down in a nice Thai massage place, remember that Wat Po is actually the place where it was all invented. That's where we were, and that's where we're going. Ah, we just met a Thai. You're from Thailand? You're from Bangkok? All right. Yes, I'm going to go into the pier. Yes, we just met a Thai subscriber who is uh, offered to take me down to the pier. And your name? Apek. Thank you, Peck. P-E-X-K. Yes, he made the best of Bangkok list. Another nice Thai subscriber stopping me in the street, asking me if I want a motorbike ride and he drove me all the way down here to the pier. Check this out. Look at this, the shop's all underwater. This is what happens after a rainy season in Bangkok. So 
So five baht, five baht for the short boat ride to where we're going. That's about 12 cents, but it's a pretty short boat ride. We're just headed right over there. And I should probably also remind everyone that Mark Weens himself is gonna be joining me when I get down to number one on the Bangkok challenge. Now, I know many of you don't believe me, but I'm happy to report that just this morning, I woke up, had a WhatsApp video message from Mark himself, where he pretty much confirmed that this is happening. Hi Chris, Mark Weens here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I just wanted to let you know that I am 100% in to join you on your video. I couldn't be more excited about it and I look forward to meeting you, Chris. So there you go. To all you naysayers out there, how do you like me now? So only 100 bot to get into this one and they even throw in a bottle of water, which is necessary. This is easily one of the most beautiful temples in all of Bangkok. First of all, the location. It sits in an immaculate spot on the west bank of the Chao Phaya River. And it's other, also known as the Temple of Dawn. So if you're an early riser and can make it here for sunrise, I'm sure it would blow you away. But the sunsets here are also equally spectacular. That's what makes this place special. It's, it's a giant spire. It doesn't look anything like most of the temples that uh, you see all over Thailand. The temple design itself here is really, really unique and just, just wildly different than most of the wats that you see elsewhere. It's called a prang in Thai, and it rises up to a height of 70 meters. And, and you see little titans kind of holding this up, holding different layers up, and that's meant to represent they're holding up the world and then paradise is on top. When I first came here 25 years ago, you used to be able to climb all the way up these steep stairs, and it was quite a treacherous climb, gave you a great view, but you're not allowed to do that anymore. So Wat Arun was first created back in 1768 by King Taksin. This is actually the original house of the Emerald Buddha. And then when the capital was moved it, it, over across the river, the Emerald Buddha moved with it into its current resting place, which is the Grand Palace. And then in the mid 1800s, King Rama III did some major renovations here. He extended the height of the spire to what it is today. And then he really spearheaded all of the porcelain that got added because he thought that it would make this place shimmer uh, in the morning light. And he was right. Ooh, look at that beautiful young coconut. Now, as you get out uh, to the exit of Wada Room, you can find some fresh coconuts. There's a little market selling everything, including the elephant pants that uh, you see many people uh, buying. So if you do need some pants, you can either rent them or, or buy some elephant pants. And then you're right back down at the river here. I'm getting tired, but the top 10 is literally just around the corner. Number 11 on the Bangkok list to rule them all is a place that I've never been before. It's a place that when I tell people I meet, I've never been there. Everyone reacts the same way. They're shocked and they start to question if I really live in Bangkok. And it's also a place that I gotta wear pants. Pants? The hell do I have to wear pants in Bangkok for? Pants? I never wear pants. I just don't like wearing pants. And the tuk tuk driver doesn't have to wear pants. Well, it looks like she might need some pants. There you go. Go buy yourself some pants. Oh, we've arrived and I'm excited. Look who I got with me. Oh, yeah. Here 
security here is definitely leveled up about 10 notches compared to any other temple I've been to in Thailand. So take a note, they take lighters, they search your bags, and yes, as I mentioned, you definitely need pants or these guys might get you. Tickets are 500 baht to get in. You could get a personal audio guide over here for 200 baht. You can get a personal tour guide. We like to just wander these places by ourselves. And an important note, don't think you can come here for sunset. Ticket times are 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. Impressions after walking in the door? Huge and sparkle. It is huge and sparkly. Now before we uh, explore too much, Haley, I'm just going to tell these guys a little bit more about this place. Okay. Okay, so this is the Grand Palace and it's perhaps Bangkok's most famous landmark. It's been the home of the Kings of Siam since way back in 1782 and that's when King Rama I moved the capital from Tonbury to this side of the river in, in Bangkok and each new king added new structures here with King Chulalongkorn transforming it into what it is today. The grounds here consist of nearly 2.5 million square feet, all enclosed by walls on all four sides, forming pretty much a rectangle. So let's go explore that rectangle. I guess this is love for the king and queen. So behind me is Wat Prakeo which is one of the most sacred temples in all of Thailand, perhaps the most. And inside it houses the famous em Emerald Buddha, legendary, really. The Buddha that was carved out of a single piece of jade. I, I can't believe I've never been to this place before. The rest of the grounds are equally impressive. It's divided into sections here in a layout similar to the older capital of Ayutthaya. The outer court was once the home of the government offices that worked directly with the king. The central court is where the king's residence used to be along with halls used to conduct state business. Although the public's only allowed inside some of the buildings, the structures themselves will amaze you. So we made it to the top 10 on the Bangkok list to rule them all. We're going on a visit to unknown Bangkok. Well, it's not unknown to everyone. Hacky doggy there sure knows it, and so do a lot of you out there, but it's unknown to me and a lot of you out there, but today it's going to be uncovered and discovered. Let the tour begin. So on this tour, so this is where the two wheels comes in. It's a bike tour and it's honestly one of the best ways to uh, see Bangkok. 70% of local Bangkokonians, they don't live in Sukhumvit, buy a soak or or sea loam. They live over here on this side of the river. So this is going to be a really good experience. Classic Bangkok. We're about five minutes into the tour and Watt's already got us stopping for a little snack. It's the best egg noodles ever in Bangkok for my audience. So we yeah, let's start from this noodles. It's called in Thai Bak Mi Hang Mu Dang. This guy, he's been serving this for 19 years and I come here every morning, especially when they get hangover. It's the uh, best food for recover you for hangover. Well, man, I could use some hangover cures. Stop number two is in the biggest Portuguese community here in Bangkok. I'm in a little Portuguese Thai kitchen and I think we have some more food here. This food 
It's a food from 180 years ago recipe by Portuguese people who brought chili to Thailand. And so Thailand people. didn't have chilies before the Portuguese? They turned us from non-spicy people to be spicy people. You guys got to show up hungry to watch two or two stops, two meals. Mmm, that's nice. Mm. Wow. Hello, man. How do I make that? Mm. So one thing you'll notice is you definitely get into some tight back alleys. I haven't ridden a bike in ages, but you snake through these gorgeous back alleys here. It's just quite an adventure. We're in unknown Bangkok now, what? Okay, out of the tunnels and back into the neighborhood. So what, we've left the Catholic Portuguese neighborhood. It feels like we're really back in a traditional Thai neighborhood here. Yes, this is a Thai temple. So what's the name of this temple? This temple is named Wat Kan La Ya Namit. Actually, it means a temple of good friends. Yo so What is come around is go around. So what is the most important things that the one you to get from doing a meditation is that you be able to recognize what your own emotion or your own feeling. So when people live in daily life and then something that hit them and make them feel like they have a bad emotion, then they be able to recognize that they have a bad emotion. They can crush it out and throw it away and open for naked emotion because we think it's you cannot control things when it's come around, but then when you, you can easily control when it's come from your inside. Yeah, I think that explains a lot of why Thai people just are the way they are. It's pretty mm -hmm. unique in the world. Thai people as a people are just so, it feels easy going for an outsider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think this, this daily life and how it relates to Buddhism has mm -hmm. a big part to play in that. Mm -hmm. We say that in Thailand is sabai sabai. Sabai sabai. Sabai sabai. Take it easy. Take it easy. It's gonna be fine. get through this day, you'll notice that our, our co-host Watt, he knows all the locals here living in the neighborhood. It's really a cool way to see Bangkok, the unknown Bangkok. And I'm gonna give you a link at the end of this video so that you can find and book this exact tour. little portable laundry service coming up. So last stop of the day, what? Mm-hmm. For family home cooking. Oh, we're at someone's house? Yes. What day, crap? What day, cap? Oh, look at this. But eat what day, crap? Wow. What? You get us into some good spots, man. Mm -hmm. So this is people just welcoming us mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. their house? Their house, they live up here. This is the living room of them. So she asked what you want to have for it. Oh, man, well, they're eating with this guy. I've eaten in some local Thai kitchens before, Watt, but uh, never quite this local. Oh yeah, ending the day with a home-cooked Tom Yum guy. What? This has been amazing. Thank you so much. An incredible day. This has been amazing. And if you do want to experience this by yourself, Watt has an Airbnb experiences page and he's got like thousands of five-star reviews. It's easy to see why. I'll leave a link in the description below. So that's number 10. The top 10 started, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little bit exhausted. It's been a wild and busy couple of weeks. I'm not sure what tomorrow's gonna bring at number nine, but I hope it's a little R&R. &R. Maybe just a little ice cold Leo would be good for this old fella. Number nine on the Bangkok list to rule them all is...
Bangkok's done some crazy things with what I'm going to call the Central Park Network, and I'm going to tour you through the whole thing, starting right here at Lumpini. So to get here, you can either take the BTS or the MRT line. Uh, jot teeny clap. I'm currently taking a motorbike taxi. I gotta love these guys. Cup coon cap. Or you can take the MRT right here to Siloam Station. And now we're at the very southwest end of Lumpini Park. We got one of the park guards taking a little snooze behind us. This is the end that I'm gonna recommend you go in. It's got this big statue here. This is the entry point that you should be coming in. And of course, no trip to Lumpini would be complete if you don't run into at least one or two Lumpini lizards. Don't know if you can see this big fella over my shoulder, but these things are almost as big as I am. For the most part, they won't hurt you. This was the very first public park ever in Bangkok, and it's still one of the most impressive. It's pretty big. It's 360 rye, which is 142 acres. This park is amazing, and we're now kind of approaching my favorite exit, and I'll tell you why. It's right, right beside these cool little Buddhist statues. This is what you're gonna wanna find. Second Buddhist statue's right there. Oh, one last Lumpini lizard. I'm gonna chase this little guy. And this is the exit you're gonna wanna take. There is a 7-Eleven across the street and you might need to hydrate if you don't have water. I got some, some water with me, so I'm all good to go. And we're now on the north side of Lumpini Park, if you look at it on a map. So while you're walking along the north uh, hall, if you're hungry, so I decap. Oh, it looks good. You can get some ice cream from this gentleman. You can stop at one of, there's, there's usually a lot of food here. It, it's, it's just getting towards sunset now, so they're all, you can see them kind of shutting down shop for the day, but these places are really, really amazing. And so if you come, as long as you're not here too late, then, then there's a lot of street restaurants, those little makeshift restaurants where they pop open some folding tables. We're just witnessing the collapse of these restaurants at night. Hard workers, I tell you, hard workers. We've made our way now to the northeast corner and what you're going to need to do is get up over this busy street onto that overpass up there and what you got to walk up these stairs to do it. They call this walkway the Lumpini Benja Kitty walkway. We got a way cooler name for it here. The locals in Thailand call it the Green Mile. This guy knows how to do the Green Mile in style. A little fist pump. Yes, he knows what he's doing. You'll always find students up here. Down that way, Siloam. Up that way is Sukhumvit. And splitting right down the middle is where we're going. So this is a 1.3 kilometer stretch of raised walkway that just slices right through the center of Bangkok. Up over there, just a few hundred meters away, you can see the skyscrapers of Sukhumvit. And as much as I love the hustle and bustle of this amazing city, I mean, let's be honest, the biggest room for improvement for Bangkok by far is the walkability. The sidewalks out there aren't so great. But right in the middle of all that is this. Now this goes another 500 meters down that way and that's how you used to have to take it. All the way down to Benja Kitty Park, the old Benja Kitty Park. But for the first time ever, this new entrance to the brand new Bangkok Central Forest is open. This is perhaps the best example of how Bangkok's probably improved since you were here last. For years uh, during COVID, they had the army in here working really fast to build this network of raised up platforms and swamp lands and walkways. It's the only forest in central Bangkok 
and it's just another planet. It's another world. Now that it's pretty much done, this is, I think, phase two, which is done. It just stretches. It's like you're in the center, 360 degrees. You can barely hear the city. You can hear the birds. My hat's off to the Bangkok government. Whoever pulled this off, thank you. So this is phase three over here. We're not going to be allowed to go in, but this used to be the uh, old tobacco factory, the old tobacco company who really started this whole project up along with Queen Syracuse in the third and final part of the park, which we're just about to get there. <laughs> know you've reached the entrance that I'm talking about when you're surrounded in these yellow flowers. It's on both sides and then you just head out through the two big white pillars and over to that end of the parking lot and you enter the original Benja Kitty Park. So this park has a few different features. First, you got the whole shaded tree area, which is great to have a picnic, a really family-friendly zone. It also has the outdoor gym. Then this place also has its own man-made lake. It's got a 2.5 kilometer track around the outside. So if you're into running, then this is another great place to come for a run. It's the, the lake is tree-lined, it's got flowers, gorgeous, lots of lizards here too. So you got, you got Lumpini Park, Bangkok's first ever park. You got this one, Benja Kitty, which opened back in 2004. And then you have the brand new Central Forest Park, which is ever expanding. And they're all interconnected by the Green Mile. Yeah, this place, a walk in the park walk in three parks definitely deserves to be top 10 in the list and if you're wondering after all those steps what neighborhood we've ended up in back in the hustle and bustle of a soak so we started over in Siloam we walked we didn't even touch a city road we escaped all of this but we've ended up back here in a soak in central Bangkok and I should tell you that if you pair number nine today's uh, item on the list with number three you're gonna make an amazing day. Oh, what's number three? Well, I can't tell you. That's a surprise, motorbikes. We'll get to number three, but make sure you pair it with this when you're making your Bangkok itinerary. Hey. Motorbikes. So what do you got? Yes, hey, best of Bangkok. Hey, what's that? Oh, he's a motorcycle up ah. okay. You going to my, work? My name is Tom. Tom? Okay. All right, Tom, you're on the best of Bangkok list. Bangkok. Number nine, brother. number eight on the list. And this is called the Green Lung. Sip song? Sip song. Okay, noon cap. Popcorn cap. So to get to number eight on the list, you're gonna need to start right at this sausage man and get yourself down here. I'm about to enter Wat Klong Doi No. This is only a few kilometers from Sukhumvip. As I'm leaving the Watt and heading down this way to get to the boat, now's a good time to tell you that all the spots in this whole list are in an app that I made. It's called Teeny, and it's got hundreds of my favorite spots, and it gives you turn-by-turn -turn directions, so it makes it easier to find all these places. Once you get down to the end of this alley, you're gonna be right on the river, and this is where you catch a boat. 10 baht? Okay. Popcorn cap. As you can see, the boat that you take isn't one of the big river boats. We're right down on the water. I'm going to the place that has infinitely more green space than anywhere that you're going to find in Bangkok. It's literally just a two minute boat ride across the river. Mm -hmm. As soon as you jump off the tiny little river boat, you're gonna enter this little hut here, and this is called the Green Lung. What you're gonna notice first is that there's just a ton of bicycles for rent. So what, again, how much to rent? 80. 80 baht for how long? One day. Yeah. But I'm not looking for a pedal bike, I'm gonna get a motorbike. One hour, 150 baht. One hour, 150? 
I take one. No, not on the back. I drive myself. Yeah, just rent motorbike. Okay, so bad news. They won't rent me just a motorbike. When I was here last time, Haley and I just rented a motorbike, tooled all around, but I'm not going on a pedal bike. I think this guy will take me. So a little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie, but I do have a trusty driver. What's your name? Chen. Chen? Chen, okay, we got our driver Chen here who's gonna take us for a little tour. Uh, I would recommend getting your own pedal bike. Definitely kind of explore this place on your own, but let me show you a few of the spots that you're gonna wanna hit. First stop he took me to is this little place with farm animals. They got goats, they got chickens, they even got an ostrich. This place is famous for its raised concrete pathways that are just wide enough for a motorbike. You definitely don't want to fall off the edge into the jungle or on this side there'd be a river. They got a little guardrail there. But uh, this is one of the coolest things about coming out here. So I'm in Srinakan Park, and this is just a few hundred meters from where we jumped on the motorbike, and it feels a lot like a typical city park, and it's gorgeous and worth a visit, but there's so much more to this place that, that we visited today. This place is the size of 33 Lumpini Parks, so picture that. It's called Bang Kachow, but it's really known as the green lung because if you look at an overhead map of Bangkok, it's shaped like a lung and the greenness is the dense jungle just spitting out the oxygen that this city so badly needs. So come in, enjoy, take a walk around this park, but then get back on your bike and tool around because there's a lot to discover here. You definitely don't have to worry about being hungry if you come out here. There's roadside restaurants all over the place, little markets like this, and it feels like you've kind of gone out into rural Thailand as you wander around and explore this place. This is the Bang Nam Pung floating market. And if floating market's your thing and you, go, you wanna put that on your Bangkok itinerary, then you could definitely tick that box by visiting the Green Lung. This is an example of one of the cafes you could stop in. This is called the Hidden Woods Cafe. Waterfall pouring down from the trees and man, it's definitely hidden in the woods. Okay, I'm changing my mind about this guided motorbike tour. It's a very, very cool cafe. I never found this place when I was exploring around here on my own. So 150 baht per hour, you might wanna get a two hour guided motorbike tour when you come out here. And at times it's amazing because you get lost in the dense jungle, but then you're always reminded that you're literally a stone's throw from one of the biggest cities in the world. So there's tons to do out here. You could make a half day of it. You could easily make a full day of it if you wanted to. You can even do an overnight. And whatever amount of time you choose to stay here, the crazy thing to always remember is that when you're done, you just hop off your motorbike and just jump right back on your little boat for the five minute drive back across the river. Look at how tiny this little boat is that you take over. We're down to lucky number seven on the list. Welcome to number seven on the Bangkok countdown so that you can plan your perfect trip to Bangkok the next time you come here. Let's see, Mark, what do you have at number seven? Or Tor Core Market. Mark, there's been too many markets on this list, so we're gonna scratch that one off. We're gonna add a tour through one of Bangkok's coolest neighborhoods. So flanked by the much glitzier Tonglor that way and the much more chill Prakanong that way, 
Ekamai is a major stop on the BTS line, and its main artery is a three kilometer stretch of road. This is Sukhumvit Soy 63, and it's flanked by Sukhumvit Road at this end and Pechaburi Road way up in the north end. So I'd recommend coming here by the BTS. And if you're meeting friends, tell everyone to meet right here at exit number one, because this is gonna put you right at the foot of Soy 63. And that's where our journey begins with what else? Eating and drinking. My favorite lunch spot is called Hamduan. They serve up the best Northern Thai food in town and I definitely recommend the cow soy. Best part is, it's only 70 baht, which is what, two bucks? Also on the cheap side is Watana Panic. This place is world famous for having what might be the oldest pot of soup on the planet. Uh, you can get it with a variety of meats. We got this sliced beef. Oh, that brisket is super tender. Legend has it, this pot of soup has been simmering for over 50 years straight. That's right, half a century of flavor in there. If you're looking for some international flavor, there's a nice Korean eatery called Bangkok Banjom, where you might just bump into me. If it's bars and clubs that you're looking for, that's probably what Ekamai is most known for. The most famous local watering holes right here, it's called the Ekamai Beer House. Great patio, some pub food, delicious beers, Guinness on tap, and it's just right across the parking lot from that Northern Thai place, Hamduan. But this isn't the only place to drink here in Ekamai. For a taste of the 90s, there's the Cassette Music Bar, a funky place to get your retro groove on. If you're looking for banging beats, then there's Babyface, Ekamai's biggest super club where things might get a little crazy. My favorite place is called Tuba, a cool space with an amazing vibe where it's mostly young local ties out to party. Guaranteed you'll have a great night if you make it to Tuba. If you're looking for a caffeine infused beverage, this place here, Featherstone, is a place where the owners created their own museum with interesting decorations, mixing it with premium coffee. They even have home cooked food on the menu. Prefer Thai tea instead? Right in the BTS station is Cha Tra Mu, which is Thailand's best chain. Ekamai is not really known for temples, but there are two here, and you can definitely add them to your half-day itinerary that you'll have built out by the end of this video. The first one is just right steps away from the Ekamai BTS station. You enter right off Sukhumvit, and this one's called Wat Tak Tong. Make sure you go inside, though. One of the cool things about temples here, so at the cap in Thailand, is that you can pretty much roam freely around them and get a sense as to the monks' daily life. You're gonna wanna come all the way to the back corner of this. Challenge for you, see if you can find this place. You end up in this little Buddha garden with tons of cool Buddha sculptures. And the really cool part is right behind you is a towering purple skyscraper of Ekamai. And this is the perfect contrast that Thailand offers between the urban and the more traditional. I just love it in here. One thing I promised to tell you is something that I wouldn't do here in Ekamai, and that's go shopping. Well, at the shopping malls at least. This is called Gateway, and it's a really odd collection of stores, and it's a pretty odd layout as well. I mean, if you're looking for home furnishings, they got a home pro and stuff like that. The food court's okay, and they do have one of the best Muay Thai gyms in all of Bangkok. It's called Fit Fact. Shout out to my buddy Kun Ek. 
But other than that, this place ain't so hot. One little tidbit for you is that right across the street is Mark Ween's restaurant, Ped Mark. And as I've told you all along, Mark's going to join me when we get down to number one on the countdown. Actually, while I'm here, I think I'll just uh, cross over there and confirm things with him right now. Oh, Mark. 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 Mark, you in there? Mark, come on. We don't have much time left to set this up, man. Mark. It, it'll all work out, trust me. 10 years ago, Mark Weens made his iconic top 25 things to do in Bangkok list. And at number six is MBK Shopping Center, a mega mall that's literally a country in and of itself. And at the time, that was a pretty impressive mall. But what Mark didn't know was that in 2018, the biggest shopping mall in Asia would open its doors. And so on the new and improved Bangkok list to rule them all, I give you Icon Siam. Lots of ways you could get here, but definitely take the riverboat. It's fun, it's free, and it gives you an iconic view. So you get a sense of the size and scale of this place. Be careful though, unless you're filthy rich, you might go broke in here. Please keep on walking, Haley. Please keep on walking. This place cost 54 billion baht to build. That's like one and a half billion US dollars. It's got two of the tallest towers in Bangkok that house a hotel and the Mandarin Oriental residences. But the main attraction is this massive shopping mall. Enough with the luxury brands already. Anyway, this place is absolutely huge. It has over five and a half million square feet spread out over seven dizzying floors. And it has a lot of shops that you might expect to find at any shopping mall anywhere in the world. But this one has a few that would surprise you. So it's a pretty decent Apple store. But Apple stores, all those other shops we just showed in the montage, that's pretty standard stuff. But how many malls do you know? Underneath the Apple store have a Porsche store, and underneath that they have a Versace store, and then over to the right they have a makeshift pop-up Gucci vault. just jumped out into the parking lot to show you the type of clientele that can afford to come here. And it's not me. Excuse me, but I'm just using the facilities in here. And I got to say that for those of you back home, like where I'm from, if you go in a shopping mall bathroom, does it look anything like this? No, no, it doesn't look anything like this. And if the toilet didn't convince you that this place is next level, look at the typical coffee shop in this joint. I'm now in a huge Japanese department store. If you're from Japan, you know this place. It's called Siam. Takashimaya, well, the Siam branch, but Takashimaya, it spans all seven floors. It's a Japanese shopping mall, but it's nestled inside a Thai shopping mall. It's like Inception, a mall within a mall. By now you're probably hungry. The food court here has to be seen to be believed. It's built to represent like a replica floating market. And this place alone is over 150,000 square feet. And uh, the unique thing about this food court is that they have food from all 77 provinces here in Thailand. So you can find almost anything you like, including this.
What's this one? Moo? Oh, chicken? Okay, I try. I got these fried chicken dumplings for a hundred baht. May not be as cheap as the street, but look at this. Mmm, really tasty. Okay, so I'm a little offended. I see the women's club over here. They got the Kids Avenue right over here. What about us middle-aged men? Why don't they make a zone for us? I mean, oh, wait, they did. It's it's called Nana Plaza. If you make it all the way to the top floor, definitely come and check out this terrace. And I've only given you a little taste of what's here. If you come at night, there's crazy water fountain shows, giant movie theaters, all kinds of stuff that I haven't shown you. And that's the thing with the Bangkok list to rule them all. I'm just giving you a little wee taste so that you can taste it, but you have to come and experience all these places for yourself. And on that note, tomorrow's huge. We start the top five. And you know what that means? Mark Wayne's only four more days until we meet, man. Yep. Right? I, Mark, look where I am. You ever saw the movie Anna and the King? That's where Anna used to live. This place has all these old converted buildings. We've made it to the top five. I can't believe this list has made it. It's, it's getting a little bit ratty here. I wanna take you for a walk in one of my favorite neighborhoods in all of Bangkok. Best place to get coffee perhaps in all of Bangkok. While I'm on my way to the next stop, why don't I let my old buddy Jerome tell you a little bit more about this place. So this is the Grand Postal Building. And this is a building that was constructed here in 1940. It used to be the old British Embassy uh, complex here. It's a little bit of a fascism idea in it. So... And what part of town are we in? This is in the Bangrak area. And the Bangrak is between Saban Taksin, where you have the BTS, and Chinatown. This area of Bang Rak has completely gentrified, like so many places all around Thailand. 10 years ago, this area would have been completely different than it is today. Wait till you see some of the stuff they've built around here. This was the house made famous. You ever saw the movie Anna and the King? That's where Anna used to live. And that was gonna be a stop on today's tour. They have this incredible old tree that everyone loves to stop and get their Instagram photos done. But we're just gonna keep on rolling into the really cool parts. I'm gonna keep this tour moving pretty fast because it's like a dotted line. I'm like Hansel and Gretel dropping you breadcrumbs. You can stop and spend as much time as you like in each of these places. This one here is the River City, Bangkok, just 100 meters down from old Anna and the King's house. And inside here, it's a little small mall, but it's different, it's funky. It's got some really creative, artistic stuff. And if you walk all the way out to the back, it has an incredible Riverside restaurant. And I'm going for some street snacks. Uh, easy. My first snack is just a simple piece of fried chicken. And uh, 20 baht, this gets the party started. As we leave Bang Rack and start to get into an area known as Talad Noi. <laughs> Done with the drumstick. Now, what are these things? I need Tao Dai Clap. <laughs> so she just rolls up these tasty little crepe things. Four for 10 baht. Oh, they're gooey. She, it's like a pancake. Mmm. Oh. Mmm, she puts a little coconut paste, mixes them inside, rolls them up. These ones are hot off the griddle. Mmm, if you need a coffee to go with your pancakes, let me show you something. So this place has all these old converted buildings that have been changed and renovated, but kept an old feel, but they're brand new. 
like this coffee shop here. This would be a great place for you to start any walking tour. And I've left turn by turn directions in my app. Just scan right here if you wanna get it. And it's got hundreds of my favorite spots in Bangkok, including this cafe that's absolutely spectacular and a great representation of what this neighborhood of Talad Noi is all about. It's the old being transformed into the new and hip and cool version of Bangkok. The reason this is so high on the list is the buildings. This is just Bangkok at its finest. Look at this one, big old wooden door. Let's see what's inside. Wow, big abandoned little workshop. This thing is still a work in progress. You can see that the gentrification's not quite done yet. Nothing like back alley Bangkok. Around every new corner is something new to see. Look at this giant Bodhi tree, all wrapped for decades. Beautiful spirit house. And oh, here's, the, here's one of the hallmark sites of this neighborhood. Don't stop walking until you find this little corner here. Because to me, this corner epitomizes what is going on here. This is a bunch of old auto parts over here, a rusted out old Fiat or Mini. I don't even know what it is. Drop a comment if you know what this is. And the textures of the walls. This isn't just old junk. It used to be, but they've kind of turned that junk into something extremely creative. Look where I am. I just turned right instead of left and I'm full of pancakes, I'm full of stuff. So this isn't just for show. These people are actually working here uh, at the auto parts. There's guys pulling in trucks, loading, offloading. It just makes for a really, really cool experience. We got the extended retired working for you crew team. Did we get the shot, boys? Yes, got the shot. All right, that's the big retired working for you team. Hard at work. We've expanded around here. Or maybe it's still me and my phone. The last stop and the best stop is just right down here. I mean, you can take a bike tour through this neighborhood, but we did that way back on number 10. You definitely want to walk and appreciate the old buildings. Just take it slow through this neighborhood. This is centuries old, Chinese owned buildings, and some of them have been converted. And the last stop is the granddaddy of them all. This is, I think, a 200 year old building that they turned into the coolest coffee shop you're ever going to see. that place was awesome. And that's the thing about this neighborhood. That used to be an old derelict abandoned building. And they're turning places that currently look like this and they're just changing it, gentrifying it in a good way into funky, creative, cool spaces while retaining the old charm. That's why it's number five on the Bangkok list to rule them all. Tell them that we're gonna meet Mark Weens in four more days. That's right, Mark, if you would just return my last message. And number four on the new and improved Bangkok list to rule them all is Chinatown, also known as Yao Rat. Mark had this way down at number 25 on his list. Man, number 25. And if you've appreciated the hard work I put into the Bangkok challenge, you know I only got one favor for you guys. Just give that like button a tickle. Just go ahead and give it a little tickle. Now, let's go for a tour of Chinatown. Bangkok's Chinatown is one of the most vibrant areas in the entirety of the Big Mango. 
It's a nickname for Bangkok for you newbies out here. It's got everything, senses of sights and smells and sounds. And I'd highly recommend coming here day or night. And to get here, you could take the subway, the underground MRT, get off at Wat Man Khon Station, and then you're right in the heart of it. And you're also right at Wat Man Khon Temple. There is some good temples and shrines worth walking around, especially if you come in the day. And if you come in the day, here's a tip for you. There's one of Bangkok's best back alley noodle shops that if you can find it, you gotta try it. I'm gonna take you to the main attraction, perhaps Bangkok's most famous street. And to do that, I got my favorite special guest. How's it going, Haley? Good, how are you? Not bad, how are you Hello. feeling? You excited? Good. Yeah, I'm very excited. Let's do this. All right. Oh. <laughs> So Haley, what are you getting? Crab cake, high style crab cake. Mm. Oh, it's good. Crispy on the outside, very fluffy on the inside, almost like a texture of a fluffy omelet. These are the traditional, I call them Thai donuts, and uh, this guy must be good. And that's the thing about Chinatown. Some of these just single carts have a lineup. Look at this, all the way around the corner. Lots of tasty stuff in Chinatown. So this is basically how it works. He's grilling up fresh seafood, scallops, shrimps, cockles, crabs. This guy shouts it out, yells out the orders. They got a bucket of live shrimp here. And then over my shoulder is just a, a sidewalk full of tables and plastic chairs where there's people enjoying very, very fresh seafood. What are you getting? Mamuang. Sour mangoes. Sour. There's sour. a live translation yeah, for you. I'll just grab it with my hand. It's like a sour candy. Yeah, it's crispy. Mm. Almost the texture of a same crunch level as an apple, but obviously more fiber it feels like. Oh, I love this. We just saw this lady scoop up what looked like some delicious rice, chopping up some chickens. So we just ordered and sat down and suddenly we got a nice table, eh? Yeah. Oh, food, my hand and a half. Sauce ahead. Pretty simple. Chicken and rice. We're gonna dip it in the sauce because I am a sauce head. This one has some breading on the outside. Mmm. How much, Haley? Jesse baht. Jesse baht. 70 baht. So that was less than two dollars for that plate of chicken and rice. You can just eat, 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 eat here. We haven't even made it halfway down the street. Look at how many people are out here eating. I got to rest up. I got a big, big three days coming up. We're down to the top three. Can you guys guess what they are? Number three on the Bangkok list to rule them all. We'll have you perched down here for one of Thailand's greatest simple pleasures. Oh, look at that cow dye porno. Oh, hide your children. All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty now. Top three, Ruam Sab Market. As you enter the market here, we got all kinds of great cafes, some bubble teas, oh, some meat sticks. Meat sticks are always good, some fried meats. Oh, 
she's got the coconuts. This is usually where you want to stop on your way out so that you can get uh, your caffeinated beverages. And this is what I'm going to call room number one. This is the main attraction. She's ready to serve some stuff up. And then you're going to find like maybe 50, maybe, maybe more food stalls in here. And what you're going to want to do is kind of shop around the outside of this place. Pick what you like. Almost everything in here is about 50 baht. So that's like, it, with, it, with today's US dollar exchange rate, that's, we're getting close to like under a buck 50 at this point. I like to walk through and snake through here to, to, to uh, room number two. But before we get there, you can see it's rooms are separated by Thai kitchens. Check this out. Every one of the stalls has a little back kitchen and they're making up their sauces. Look at that simmering away. Now, let's leave this kitchen and take you into room number two. This is a great place to experiment with Thai food. See, the lineup's already starting. Massive lineup over here. This guy, well, that guy's new. A lot of places have been in here for years, decades probably. And then some of them are uh, brand new. This one is looks really tasty. The beauty of this place is you can come uh, multiple times and just get different experiences. But the experience I normally come from, most of you know, Pad Krapau Lady. And I get a lot of people asking me, how to find Pad Krapau Lady. You've come to the market based on my previous videos, and then you can't find her. Well, here she is right here. So what they cap? Yes, this is the lady who cooked the pad for pal that I put into space. Oh, God speed pad for Can I get one? Saitohu? Okay. They're gonna cook it up. If you wanna get a water, 10 baht. What's that like? 28 cents? See what else they got. They got grilled chicken, fried chicken. Cow man guy? Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh, toil and trouble. What is in your cauldron, sir? He is pulling out the crispy pork belly, ladies and gentlemen. This is exciting. I love a good crispy pork belly. So they cut it off into strips and then they cut those this each strip into bite-sized pieces. But look at this, it just goes on and on and on. As far as you can see, behind me, you can see this is mainly delicious Thai desserts. Sometimes I'd wander in here just to get a hit of this section. Waffles with chocolate, waffles with nuts. And then back over here, a big Thai dessert table. So these are mostly coconut flavored. Oh my God, I have to get these. I've eaten these in a few videos in this series. These are my new favorites. So these are our little rectangular, almost gooey, sticky, glutinous rice pancakes with freshly shredded coconut. Tao dai clamp. 40. 40? Okay. So they cut them up with scissors into little bite-sized uh, uh, rectangles. Okay, so we've got the dessert, but our, our food's probably done. We should go back. Oh, let me take you this way though, because we'll, 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 we'll hit the fast forward button just a little bit here uh, because it is getting busy. I always like to look for a seat under a fan. Is that one gonna turn? Oh yeah, it's turning. Okay, so this is gonna be my seat right here. Now, let's see if our pad for is ready. Oh, there it is. Cup gun cap. So that's 65 baht for a delicious plate of pad per pound. Now, I like some of these. Just a little bit. We don't want to hide the kai dao. This stuff here is like the, the, the fried toasted basil. Oh, he wants to put more okay. chilies on. Okay. More chilies? Okay. 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 Again? Yeah. Oh my, Ooh, this man wouldn't yeah. let me walk away without putting more chilies and I'm already sweating. You gotta go over here to get your cutlery. It's in these big plastic bins. So there you have it. Number three 
on the Bangkok list to rule them all. We'll have you perched down here for one of Thailand's greatest simple pleasures. A cheap Thai meal surrounded by Thai office workers. This place is not uh, usually found by too many foreigners, which makes it special. Oh, the, oh, look at that cow dye porno. Oh, hide your children. So we have the world's best pad krapow that's actually been sent to space, all with the extra chilies here for uh, $1.50. We got a Thai omelet with sausage, pork, chilies. That's a buck ten. We have our dessert waiting for us for a buck ten. So I'm $3.70. I'm in heaven. And you're gonna be in heaven too if you come here. This might not be the flashiest place on the Bangkok list to rule them all, but it's the place that I've personally visited way more than anywhere else on the whole list. And you should definitely come in here. It's a great place to uh, have maybe your first or second day in Bangkok and experience Thai food, experience Thai culture, and just, just dive right into it. Oh, I'm excited. We're down to number two on the Bangkok list to rule them all. And let's see what Mark had on his list at number two. Mark Weens, 10 years ago, you said number two was the Chadu Chak market. Including over 5,000 permanent stores. And if you count the makeshift stalls and hawkers around the market, the number of vendors is closer to 15,000, making Chatuchak the largest market in Thailand. What I'm gonna bring you to tonight is my favorite night market in the whole city. It's where the local Thais go. And if you're wondering what it's called, well, what, can't, can't you read Thai? Our favorite market. So this is where the taxi will drop you off. And to get in this market, you walk down this massively long tunnel. Haley's gonna lead the way. You gotta walk a couple hundred meters just to get inside this place. Restaurants, bars, they're setting up the drum kits, getting ready for live music. This is a night market at its finest. This is the Thai Mugata, the barbecue over the open coals, fresh seafood, fresh meat. We're still just entering this place. So this is called the Rote Phai Market. Rote Phai means train in Thai. They have like these shipping containers all with double deckers, so patios on the top, food everywhere. This place is only open on, I think, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and it is a night market, so you don't want to arrive much before 6 or 7 p.m. So, Haley, what are you getting? I'm getting coconut pancake. Looks like Haley's starting with dessert. It's crispy on the outside, mm. chewy on the inside. The Thais sure do know their way around food. Their cuisine has got to be up there with one of the best in the world. Big pots of soup that have been simmering for forever. People throwing spice on. Man, the food portion of this market, there's a million options. I gotta get this. What is it? Shrimp head, deep fried shrimp head. What do they taste like? Uh, cracker, very crisp, crispy. Oh, so good. Honey, you gotta try this, it's so good. Okay, it's I'll so try funny. this. But the only reason I'm trying it is because I'm in training, because I'm meeting Mark Weens tomorrow. Okay. I am. Okay, okay, okay good for you. In the middle of a Thai market, we're meeting Korean. Oh, eat a one duck bogey. I'm gonna have some. Is it gonna burn me? No, I don't think so. Ah. Oh, is it? A little hot. Oh, oh, that's nice. That's got a nice tang. Oh, I always love those dumplings. Can I try one? Okay. So this place sells all kinds of, of really deep, deep fried meats. Mm. I only has she bought? So I picked up 50 baht worth of this grilled meat right here. 
you can just, it's like a grab bag. I got some of the cabbage, I got some cilantro, I got some pork. Mmm. I'll just take a little tip of the Thai chili. And that's enough for me. And then when you come out this end, suddenly you're in like a little shopping zone. Clothing stores, people getting their nails done, shoes, all kinds of stuff. And it just goes on for uh, aisles and aisles and aisles of shops and shopping. Hi there. What's your name? What's your name? Boom. Gan and boom. Mook and ba and gan. Nice, you've made it. Best of Bangkok, baby. Number two, you guys are on the list. And we're at the train night market. Wondering why they call it the train? Right there. This is the original train night market. So Haley, what's the verdict on the shop in here? Oh, it's fun. As someone who loves vintage, this is the place. And the price is like $2, $3, $4, and you get all kinds of stuff. The reason I love this place is because it's so funky. You got the young, hip, urban ties, hanging out with a bunch of old cars. They got old airplanes hanging from the roofs in here. The craziest vintage shops that you'd ever want to see. And then once you've wandered around, if you want to go for a drink, hey, pull up at the, at the converted minivan bar, go to a cafe, roll a little doobie. Yeah, this is Bangkok, baby. Jaggy, we're just leaving and everyone's yeah. just coming. Yeah, I know. Party just started. Yeah, that's all right, though. I got a big day with Mark Weens tomorrow, so I want to go home and rest up. <laughs> Would you please give it all, on? Huh? She doesn't even oh. believe me. Do you guys believe me? Anyway, number two, the Road Fi Market has a new BTS station so that you could probably take this when you come here yourself. And Chatter Chack is a worthy number, too. I'll give you some credit, Mark. You can pick either market. I just like this one because it's more local, more funky, more hip, and more of a unique experience. Tomorrow's the biggest day yet. Number one, I'm going to meet Mark Waynes. I mean, it's going to be amazing. I can't. It's all locked and loaded. Mark, would you just help a brother out, Mark? I'm just I'm begging you, Mark. We got one day left. Mark, please. Don't leave me hanging. Yes, it's true. You see, we've been counting down the top 25 things to do in Bangkok, the greatest city on earth, and we finally made it to number one. Mark Weens had the Wang Lang Market at number one on his list, but I thought for our list, we could do way better. We could do enjoy a local Thai meal with Mark Weens. Now, I know that most of you don't believe that I'm actually gonna meet Mark Weens, but I can assure you, I'm standing right outside his restaurant and he's promised to meet me there. He just said that I had to do a little something first. The things I do to meet Mark Weens here, we're just cooking up a Kai Dao in his kitchen. Hey Chris, are you done in there? Yeah, yeah, I'm almost done, man. My first time eating buffalo at Mark's restaurant with Mark, this is pretty awesome. Should we do a little drizzle? Some of that garlic. Oh yeah. Fish sauce for that lime juice. Should we just dig in here? I think we should just go in. All right, let's go for it. A little bit of that egg scoop. Go for the whole chili. Mm. Oh man. Oh man. Buffalo the is buffalo a is great amazing, yeah. flavor. This is my first buffalo crepau, but it won't be my last. <laughs> So if you're looking for the most delicious pad crepau in town, then come right by here. Now, I can't guarantee that he's going to be here. This is Ped Mark. That's Ekamai Station, and you got to try this place. All right, should we jump in a cab? Yeah, let's just take a taxi. We're going to go to a place called Somtam Jeso. She's an absolute legend for green papaya salad, Somtam Isan food for just like an everyday kind of spot to go to. Somadikab. Somadikab. And this is... 
Jaso. Jaso, she's awesome. Yes. สวัสดีครับใช่สวัสดีครับใช่ครับใช่ครับ Oh, and look at all the chicken wings, Chris. This place is famous for their chicken wings. Oh, look at this chicken wings. Yeah. Oh, so you, will you write your order? You can write it, or you can just kind of like point check at it. it. Yep. Can you read Thai? I can if it's food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cup chai. It may not go so well at times, but I'll give anything that you want to feed me a try. Okay. I only get this experience once in a lifetime, Mark. So, <laughs> Thanks, Chris. so Thanks, torture Chris. me. Lan, okay, cup. I've always wondered how this guy eats so much. Every single video he makes. Well, I'm about to find out. Yes. Oh, that's, uh, Are we getting some of those wings? Yes, got to get those wings. That's a must. Yeah. And I like how they keep them really, like this really low smoky fire, so they kind of smoke at the same time, right? Yeah. Embedding each wing with that fire smokiness. When I first came to Thailand, I liked, I liked some thumb Thai and that kind of sweet and sour flavor. But then when I discovered bala and started getting used to it, it's like, Oh, I could not go back to some thumb Thai. Just the complexity of that fermented fish sauce, which I think just and does this can't one have bala? No, no, it doesn't. So we got one some with thai and one have bala. and and one without. Yeah, okay. yeah. So some thumb Thai is just uh, palm sugar, lime juice, fish sauce, but not fermented fish. So this is the tam tang. And what is that? Cucumber with crab and fermented fish sauce. So this is just the classic kambala. And then what are the seeds on top? The seeds are uh, mekatin. I believe in English it's called the white papinac seeds. Do you know the sata, stink beans? Yeah. They're coming yeah. in the south. Coming These in the are south. like babies? They're like babies. Oh, really? But they're not as pungent. Oh, yeah. That's the komu yang. The komu yang. The grilled yeah. pork neck. And this one is the nam tok. The, the table, grilled pork salad. The table's filling up, Mark. Do we still have more? I think we have a couple more dishes. Oh, here it is, Chris. The labadook. That's the one you were talking about? There it is. Okay, so it looks like we've uh, pretty much gotten everything. I think this is most of what we got, yes. So it's true. Mark Weens has a big appetite and this man loves to eat. So she chops up all of the D-bones, the catfish, and then chops it up with galangal and chilies and sawtooth coriander and shallots. Oh, I got duck too. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> Cheers, man. My first time trying this one. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. Whoa. The galangal in there. Oh, it just pops. Taste that kaukua, the, the toasted rice powder in there really nicely too. Wrapped with the little sticky rice? Yeah. Mm. I think we gotta move in for the, the tambu bala. So is this one really spicy? This might be pretty spicy. Look at the color of that. The redness of that. Okay, you show me how it's done. This is the dish that I, I've, been, I've been scared of. I woke up fearful mm. of this dish. So much flavor. It's one of those chilies that will start to build on you, I think. Oh, really? It comes on slow, but it I keeps it on, on coming? Slow. I think so. Fill me up a spoon. Okay. I'll, I'll eat whatever you put on it. You need some of those Papinac seeds. All kinds <laughs> of chilies on here. <laughs> Bupara in here? There is. Okay, so, man. And those white papinac seeds have a nice crunch to them. Stand clear, everyone. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Oh yeah, that has some spice to it. Mmm. Yeah, the spice kind of starts slow, but it creeps. You just dip the sticky rice right into man. the... Nothing like sticky rice. Fresh, hot sticky rice. Oh, there were about 60 seconds after I <laughs> ate that bite, and it's uh, it's still it's coming on. Kick. It's still Started coming to kick, on. Yes. Again, you can see there's quite a lot of dry chilies pounded up in here. So this one is also spicy. Okay, now it's getting real. He doesn't shy away from the chilies, as we all know. <laughs> Some more bubara. I can see how that bubara would be addictive. Like powerful flavor, but it's so much umami. It's so much like salty flavor. depth of flavor, yeah. All right, Chris, we got the, the num jim here. We're ready to get, dig into those chicken wings. So grab a wing. Yeah. There's a number of different strategies. You could probably do the pour method. You could do the dip method. Mark's going with a classic dip method. Classic dip. Right off the stick here. Mm. 
Oh man, Chris, the crispiness of that skin, the sweetness of that sauce from the tamarind, really good. So Mark went with the dip method. I'm gonna go with the spoon and pour method. Let's just see, I'm gonna mess it up over here a little bit, Mark, but I'm gonna get a nice bunch of that on there. Oh my. I think there's a lot of my viewers out there kind of wouldn't know how to tackle a place like this where the menu's all in Thai, they don't know what's going on. I think you can look for a couple of clues, like if you don't speak Thai. One of them, for instance, you'll notice the big clay jars at the front. You'll notice that she's pounding things up. Then it's definitely an Isan restaurant that serves green papaya salad. It's so visual, right? You can see they're grilling things. So you might just kind of like ocean over there. I want some of those and... Yeah, that guy's like, just got... Whatever you get is going to be good. I think a lot of people come to Bangkok, especially maybe if they've come from the first time and they have this maybe misconception that these places, they might not look like the cleanest restaurants in town, but they serve up the most delicious food that you can get here. For sure, for sure. Look at that marbling on that pork neck. Oh yeah. Look at that. This is one of my all-time favorites. Look at that, man. What's that sauce called? Um, just Nam Jim Kai or Nam Jim... Nam Jim Chao? Nam, Jim, Nam Jim Kai. Oh yeah, that's fatty. Give it the old dip. He's grilling this one up. He's got like the half barrel. He's actually smoking them. Where he's smoking them. Yeah. So this one, I discovered that one actually in our neighbor's hometown of Toronto. And that's got a lovely flavor to it. Yeah, it's like a grilled pork salad. I'm just gonna rehydrate that a little bit. Classic, meaty. That lime juice to offset it. The herbs in there. Look at that. Oh yeah. Floppy. That's a bite right there. I'm tall, dripping with juices. Oh. So for this next one, we're going in with sticky rice. All right, make a little ball. We're gonna do Dip it at the same time. All right, man. <clears throat> and Mark, I'm gonna try and match your reaction. This is where stuff gets real. All right. Now, let's see, I'm with the king of food reactions. I'm gonna try my best to keep up, ready? Oh, wow. Oh, oh wow, wow. wow. <laughs> this is a good guy sitting next to me, ma'am. All of you out there who watches videos like these two here, oh, yeah. how awesome is it to be sitting next to Mark? <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Thank you guys. The chili buzz. <coughs> oh, no. <coughs> oh, this is where it all goes south. It sometimes makes you gasp a little bit. Everyone's getting their food. This place is starting to crank. This is a lunchtime rush in a local Thai restaurant. The scene of the crime here. Oh yeah, <laughs> flavor overdose. It's like surfers ride waves. Man, I was riding waves of chili yeah. heat. So that's what oh, Isan food is to me. It's just waves of flavors yeah. and, and different heat levels. You know, it's not that heavy too. I like it, you know, it's very refreshing. This is about as good as it gets outside of Isan. Right here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, thanks a lot for doing that. Yeah. So number one on the Bangkok list is uh, go where he tells you and enjoy a nice local Thai meal, eh? I think we share the opinion that really getting into the some of these local restaurants, like the experience that you have, the friendliness of the people, and just the taste of the food, it's something that never gets old. Well, Mark, I got a little oh, gift man. for you, just a little shirt. And this is the top 25 things to do in Bangkok. There's you oh, and so me. Oh, is this a new release? Oh, this that's is a new awesome. Release. Is this a new release? It is. Oh, it's an honor. Thank yeah, you, Chris. there you go. Dude, so, this is great. The, the man who's uh, shared his Bangkok <laughs> experience with so many of us, man, I just you. can't thank oh, you enough man. for coming out for number one. Yeah. So you didn't believe me, but there he was. Mark Weens, the man himself. What a day. That was probably my favorite day so far on this channel. Thanks for your support and much love everyone.